Okay, well, welcome to the CMC Markets Weekly Charting Analysis Webinar with myself, Jasper Lawler. Just have the risk warning on the screen in front of us. We're going to have a look through that and then get to the markets. <coughs> Should say any questions at any time, just feel free to, to send them any time in the chat or the Q&A boxes and I'll be happy to do my best to answer those at any stage. Be it some particular asset class you were looking at or a um, particular charting pattern or news event, wanted some opinion on it, <coughs> certainly happy to put that across. Okay. So to be honest with you, not a lot in the way of economic news out today. Only it was uh, the big one really was earlier in which we had uh, GDP reported from Japan. That, as you can see, quarter over quarter in our market calendar here, uh, Japan basically didn't grow over the quarter, and over the year, it's only grown 0.2 percent. Now the the market reaction has been fairly sanguine. Um, you know, I think partly, partly it's partly summer trading, but uh, also just partly that the uh, government of Japan just introduced a massive new fiscal stimulus package, and so the hope is that uh, that can you know help growth going forward. And to some extent, it's understandable that Japan's economy has had a bit of a pullback. Uh, the yen is appreciated quite substantially of late, and uh, indeed oil prices have pricked up as well, so uh, Japan's a net importer of oil, so <coughs> uh, Japan does well from lower oil prices. But uh, I think one thing it does do is, uh, you're seeing J Japan, which is the third largest economy in the world, seeing its growth stall, you know, that's after figures uh, for Q2 in the US coming below expectations, same in Europe, <coughs> um, coming in sort of you know, d definitely down on the first quarter. There's obviously a bit of a slowdown happening globally. Uh, and so when you look at these equity markets as they currently stand, um, you know, US markets specifically up in near record high territory, you know, I think it's a fair conclusion to reach that it's not because of economic growth. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's not because of economic growth, uh, but then also corporate earnings have been coming down and prices have been going up so pe people aren't buying because there's um, yeah, a, a, a b bargains to be had in terms of valuations price to earnings ratios are going up because the price is going up and earnings are coming down it's getting stretched from both directions pulling it higher so m markets are what you could easily say overvalued um, or getting more overvalued and uh, and growth uh, global economic growth is slowing. So, you know, what else is there to, to justify this rise in markets? Well, I think, you know, it's probably no mistake that if we just jump across to the uh, UK 100 here, that we're aiming for our eighth day of gains today. <coughs> and when did those gains start? Well, they started on Thursday, uh, the week before last, when the Bank of England cut interest rates. So I think this is as it has been for really a number of years now. It's pretty. It's a central bank, low interest rate driven rally in stock markets. Um, some some UK treasuries in the uh, sorry UK gilts um, in the last uh, yeah last week dipped into n yielding negative. Um, so. <coughs> You know that uh, is obviously to say that it's it's not too much of a return to be had from investing in in a bond market. Some people people still are buying it. Obviously, that's half of what's the price driving the price higher. Um, but you know they're not getting good returns. So those who are looking for good returns, they they go into the stock market. So that that's you know obviously part of the story as to why low interest rates are good. Low interest rates are also also supposed to cause um, uh, companies to invest. Um, that's not happened obviously um, as, as much as would like it's actually been consumers spending and so you could say that the consumers spending has been driven somewhat by rising house prices and you know lower mortgage payments so you've got a bit more extra money in your pocket on your on your mortgage probably on your car loan as well um, enabling you to go out and spend uh, but if, if, if companies aren't investing 
Um, not to not to be trying painting a massive downer picture here. The UK economy is doing fine at the moment, but I'm just saying some of the the risk here for the UK and and Germany and and, and indeed the US is that um, that sort of underlying uh, strength from business investments not quite there. Uh, we're kind of relying on consumers and consumers somewhat supported by these low interest rates at the moment. In rates look like going down if anything you know one thing you can say from the Bank of England cutting interest rates it was meant to be the Bank of England and the Fed raising rates together against everyone else cutting rates now the Fed's on their own you know people are scaling back their expectation as to when the Fed will raise rates um, you know we were just talking about Japan if I scale across to dollar yen because someone was asking about it there uh, Richard um, <coughs> you can see that um, for the most part the dollar has been kind of dipping um, you know some of that is um, a, some of this is like a rally in in the yen because there's you know there's <coughs> there's a question mark over whether the Bank of Japan has the ability to do any more easing which would devalue the yen but there's also a, mal a general element of dollar weakness here because as I mentioned the pound cutting interest rates um, has actually caused some weakness not only in the pound but in the dollar because again uh, how can the Fed really substantially raise rates uh, when every other central bank is going in the other direction it's uh, policy divergence is um, is really uh, the key phrase again at the moment so I'll, I'll get back to that chart specifically let's run through some of these uh, so that's I think a bit of a general backdrop as how I'm interpreting things uh, but let's get into some of these charts specifically now, now I said last week, and I think the the week before, you know, just because we're you know we're up near record highs, you know, it's not a reason to to think that old oh, prices are too high. We have to sell every time we start a new bull market. It requires taking out old highs. So don't get scared just because the market's high, and you know we haven't gone massively higher, but we have gone higher in markets, and. Um, you know, j j just take what the price is telling you, rather than what you perceive should be the case. You know, like I said, company earnings are going down, economic growth is a bit weak. You know, why are stocks higher? I should sell them. You know, they're at record highs. Let's sell them again. That might work out from a longer term perspective, but <clears throat> for the moment, from a kind of trading perspective, the trend is higher. So we did. So we this was this this block here marks um, this. Brexit peak up to the re former record peak from last year and uh, this is the US 30 made it up into record territory we slid down into this zone that I'd kind of marked out we put in a low here and then we we broke out to the top side this um, uh, this this was the Friday following the Bank of England vote I believe <coughs> and so what happened here is that this particular day here this August 1st was a was a peak see so we had a lower candle on either side on this day we put we pushed above it so we were back into a short-term uptrend once that high had been taken out and so and then we made another small high here made a you know made a low here where there's this this candle has a high on either side and we pushed higher again above that previous high we've dipped down towards these um, you know these closing levels but now we're pushing higher again and this this marked line marks that new high that we reached uh, just at the tail end of last month so again a push through and a close above that old high and it's a, it's another confirmation that we're in an uptrend but still making gradual higher highs and higher lows here you know this is an uptrend um, until to my mind the first the first sign of weakness this market at the moment as it stands you know if we put in a, another higher low up here it will change but at the moment uh, there's no real reason to get worried about this market until we drop below this 18480 which was this low from uh, from the 10th of August <coughs> and and uh, if we <coughs> screens playing fun of the games with me at the moment there we go <coughs> If we, uh, if we jump across to some of the other indices, it's a similar story. So, worth noting today that the German DAX just went into positive territory for 2016. You see that if you read my um, 
mid-morning note this morning in the insights. Uh, so you can see that here. This is when we kind of gap down at the start of the year on our, on our price chart. We've obviously recovered prices inside of that gap. So now, as of today, up into that, uh, this you know this was the uh, this was January, this was December. So we're back up into those December prices now. <coughs> and uh, you know I've marked out the the point at which I would start getting worried about this market would actually be way down here, right back at the 200-day moving average, because we haven't really put in a low um, since then. You know as I'm suggesting what a low could be. Um, you could argue that this perhaps is, so this would be a more conservative option. We've got a low here at 10.632, the low on this candle, 10.634. So you could say this candle is slightly lower, so if you want to be a bit more conservative, time to be worried about this, the rally in the Germany 30, would be if we drop through that daily low. And then you can, you know, you can drop down to the, the lower time frames, obviously, and see it a bit more clearly quite a solid uh, bunch of support for several four-hour candles in a row an attempt to break down there and a big push higher so again um, you know, the, it's, the markets are gradually edging higher um, and to my mind until this level gets taken out and then more significantly down here you know we're, we're uptrending and this is a theme across equities again UK 100 we already looked at a little bit but um, <coughs> if I give you an idea where I'm getting some of these levels from I go to the weekly chart this was a significant level, pretty much was a barrier for most of 2013 and 2014. Uh, this sort of, sort of just just shy of six nine hundred really, sort of six eight seven five. I've got it pinned on my chart. Six eight seven five to six nine hundred is a big level. We're above there now, um, so we're running into this couple of lows here before we broke down quite big in in, in uh, May last year. But to my mind, at the moment, it looks like we want to challenge the record highs. It looks like we want to challenge 7,000 at least, which is a big sort of psychological number, obviously, for the for the FTSE. And again, if we scroll down to the, <coughs> the daily charts, this was a lower low here. So you can see this this was where we put in a peak, and then we tried to break a few times. We didn't get any closes above, and we we caused a drop down. Um, but once we once we pushed above that old peak again you know then we're into our gradual uptrend <coughs> and so again I, you know I would say if we move that up to here this would maybe be the level to about being worried about the uptrend unfolding this this lower low here within this uptrend and then a bit like the DAX lower down you can obviously pinpoint this low uh, but you know just because the market looks overstretched obviously you know if you're already long the market no point in just massively doubling down <coughs> Um, but uh, you know, still short-term fresh entries. It's still a, you're still going with the trend. So if you get pullbacks to say this, you know, you can say this was probably you know again. It's difficult to see sometimes on the daily chart. This was a higher high. <coughs> and we drop down to the four-hour chart. We can see easier here that there's these these two peaks. If the market pulls back into here. Um, then to my mind you know within this uptrend that offers some sort of opportunity but then again if it drops down through that low you know we're kind of looking at this consolidation area um, you know then that would be the, maybe the time to get more concerned but only um, only below that level of close below so looking pretty well supported in equities in general obviously you know like I said there's obviously risks out there and it's not like it's you know last forever uh, at some point, there's going to be something that flusters markets. Um, you know, things like the uh, the VIX, which measures volatility, that's right down there at the moment. So, sort of showing a bit of complacency in the market. So, yeah, at some point there's going to be a shakedown, but um, <coughs> it's not happening yet. So, I think um, I'm going to call it a day there in terms of indices. Uh, we, you know, there was a specific request for dollar yen, so I'm going to jump across to currencies for now. Um, so let's just get a better context as to where we are with this. <coughs> Clearly, a downtrend on the uh, the longer time frame. You know, below that 200-week moving average, the the 50-week moving average, very much downsloping, but still quite a fair distance away. Um, 
yes, the price could see a substantial rally would still be below that downsloping line, but just to give us an idea of the general trend, and this downsloping trend line working pretty well. <coughs> That said, we're running into, you know, this is a very nice example of a downtrend, um, but we are running into uh, 100, which is a big psychological number. And so I, th I think there is some scope for um, for a bottom sometime around, someplace around 100. You know, I can see it eventually going lower, but I think 100 is proving to be quite a big barrier. Um, but it's a situation where you're obviously going against the trend if you're going along around 100. But uh, again, you've got a pretty Id pretty good idea when you're wrong. Um, if um, you know if you're trying to essentially pick the bottom of the market here, um, you know if we dip much below this low at um, at 99, then obviously you know the market has made a new low. You know that's suggestive of downtrend. It's not a time you want to be buying. So you know then you would be getting out but you know look look for signs I would say of a reversal um, in and around this 100 to 99 area we've not quite had it yet we're really just in kind of consolidation phase at the moment so we'd, we've not had a big dip down and reversal but um, but one thing to keep in mind is, is you know just these um, these high high these highs they're being made so that's a high there and that's a more significant high above it you know so look for a close above um, you know, obviously, just uh, 102. You can see as well the closes are taking place, and we've got a little f false breakout above it. But that peak is at 102.27, and then this next peak here from the 8th of August. You know, that would be yeah, like a little a little double bottom if we got a, if we got above there, and that would mark a bit of a shift in the trend. We've all, you know, and then likewise. Um, a drop through one of the lows that we've been making down here I would suggest um, pretty much the sort of one, uh, 165 type area you know, that would suggest that the trend is continuing to the downside so worth jumping straight to, to cable pound against the dollar because there's a there's a good amount of UK data out this week you know, no surprise, by the way, that the uh, that pound has pretty much been down. I think it's actually been down nine days on the trot. We've got a small update there. It was pretty much flat. Um, but, you know, uh, the FTSE's been going higher. The pound has been going lower. You know, the pound dropping is supporting some of these multinationals that, um, you know, may re maybe report in pounds, but um, earn money in dollars and other foreign currencies. So... <coughs> Again, the possibility that we're putting in a, a bottom in the pound. You know, there's scope for a double bottom around this 128. Um, but so we've not quite got the, the evidence for it yet. Um, one thing you can kind of do here to get a kind of idea where the zone of interest is, is if we talk, if we call this the peak... Uh, not the peak, the uh, the trough, obviously, the kind of the low. You know this, and then taking it to the high of the next candlestick. Um, it's this kind of area that it's been. You know, obviously, we got the bounces back there from from this high that got taken out. Was resistance as a peak. Um, lower candles on either side came back and it acted as support. But we're down through that support now. So to my mind, we're probably heading down towards the bottom of this zone down to the 128 again so we really need to test the metal of the bears can they actually take us down to new lows beyond that kind of um, that post brexit uncertainty low uh, but as I was saying there's lots of data this week which is really the first set of data that we've had post the referendum so basically data for July up till now we've just had the June data so we've got uh, retail sales inflation and unemployment data all coming out this week um, from a Bank of England's perspective, the inflation data should be the most important, um, <coughs> but inflation's relatively low. And uh, the chief economist of the Bank of England, just in the last, uh, I think it was this weekend, uh, basically said something along the lines of their first priority is growth and jobs. 
Well, really, it's not. Their, their, their mandate is to just offer price stability. Their, their, their job is not anything to do with growth and jobs, but they've, they've taken it upon themselves to make that their job. Uh, and so from that, you probably got to say that the, the labor market data is going to be one of the more significant data releases this week. If we see signs that businesses are scared of hiring people after the Brexit uh, referendum, then it increases the odds that the Bank of England do more than they've already done. So add to the quantitative easing, cut rates down to zero, maybe even at the next meeting. So, you know, for the data this week uh, is on the poor side, particularly the jobs, particularly the uh, average hourly earnings that come out alongside the unemployment data, um, that could be the trigger for seeing us below 128. Um, and at the moment, the, the trend is down, but we're just still above that, you know, that kind of major swing low. And uh, we'll have a look at the euro, obviously, still one of the most actively traded pairs, but just um, still acting as a, a bit of a bit of a dog. Um, a, bit, a, bit, a bit tricky to, to really pinpoint uh, the trades here. So, you know, really it's kind of, uh, it's inside of sort of upward sloping range. Um, that can change if we get through this 123.60 that I've highlighted here. Um, you know, we had a, a brief high here and we tried to get through it. It was a bit of a false breakout. So again, we need to get above out of this kind of range here again. And then the next target would be that high. Then we could start getting excited about a move back up to the highs up here. But at the moment, um, still kind of stuck below that 112, uh, 36 to 40 type area. The one thing that suggests that we could get above there is the fact that we've broken this downsloping RSI trend line. And um, probably the final trigger for it would be if we see a matching break of the sort of price trend line that comes in a bit above. So the, the RSI momentum is already broken. If we get price above that old peak and then above that trend line, you know, that could be the sign that we're pushing up to 114 again, but we're not there yet. Uh, so I suppose while we're below that 112, 36 to 40, you know, probably the bias is uh, that we head back lower into the range until we get that, that next confirmation. And uh, also worth noting, just uh, Euro Sterling, we've been talking about this level for a number of weeks, but we finally taken out that. Uh, so, you know, we were looking at that low in cable um, for post Brexit. The euro uh, euro pound pair has made the kind of has has an opposite high made at the same time. It's taken out that high, uh, so you know we're above this 86.25, very much in an uptrend uh, for for euro sterling, um, highest in over a year, I believe. If we scale up to the weekly chart, you know we obviously had a prolonged drop in the euro as as. Um, Draghi was, you know, talking the, the currency down and promising all sorts of quantitative easing, etc. That's almost been completely unwound. But some big long-term resistance up around uh, from these two peaks, starting around um, 87.70, I would say, is probably the um, 87.70 up until the 88. Is pretty much massive long-term resistance. So you, you'd imagine. That there's going to be some sort of significant pullback in that sort of area. For the moment, the trend is high, though. <laughs> okay, and a bit of time to jump over to oil prices, which certainly haven't been insignificant. Um, we've had a good rally of late. I'm not sure how much stock we can put in this rally because you know a lot of it has been on speculation that we're going to get some sort of production freeze um, from from OPEC in a meeting that they've organised outside their typical schedule for next month. And so, obviously, if OPEC were to freeze production even at near record levels, 
you know that suggests that you know supply can't go any higher from OPEC US supply is coming down so the, the supply picture doesn't look as negative for oil and the free as you would imagine would be the first step towards a cut so that's the idea and you know markets have been ripping higher but we're, you can see that we're right around the 50% retracement of this of the dip that we had from the highs uh, we're, we're bumping into these highs that we had here uh, from July um, this is the 50% level which corresponds to these lows and we're into the um, the 50-day uh, moving average so a few areas of resistance here um, so worth looking you know we're already starting to see a bit of a what could potentially end up being a shooting star pattern today so worth looking on the uh, on the lower time frames we've already kind of taken out this little bit here but even on these lower time frames there's not really a decent low to pinpoint um, on the four hour chart you, know, you can drop down to the one hour you can see we've taken out this low here and then we tried to rally back above twice failed looks like we're taking out this short term low here on the one hour chart so we're at a big significant resistance level on the long term charts and there's some signs now on the short term charts um, that uh, we're starting to roll over um, you know it's it's, it's going to be difficult to use a daily chart here at any uh, to you know really this this uptrend still in place um, you know while we're above this low down here if you're looking at high highs and lows so while this could end up being the top and we've got to be getting a bit of a short-term breakdown we really need another low to be put in and a failed swing to the top side and then a breakdown to get a kind of confirmation not from a longer term perspective so a bit more patience need if you're looking for the the daily chart confirmation but if you're just looking for a breakdown on the short term against the long-term resistance we're, that's kind of happening right now and I'll just move swiftly over to gold <coughs> So gold really kind of consolidating at the moment. Um, you know, this this has been a significant level for a while. It was resistance along these closing levels here. It's acted as support once, twice, almost a third time. So if we dip, we we'll get a dip below one three thirty. You know, I think that's significant. We'll get a possibly a drop down to one three ten would be the next obvious area of support should that give way. But at the moment, we've you know we're pretty much putting in a um, you yeah, know this is just a a higher low you know that was the low um, we haven't been able to put any other lows up here then we put in this low here and then we put in a high um, but that has you know that's been a lower high so you know higher low lower high not really a trend taking place we, you know we need these highs to get taken then these to again you know to be in a, in a, a proper bullish uh, scenario So that's about it. Um, that's the charts. That's the you know the UK data obviously to look out. Still a few US earnings left. Um, had some GDP data from the Japan, uh, from Japan, um, suggesting I would say the big takeaway from that would be that global growth is is kind of slowing a bit in the second quarter, um, and you know you you'd you'd say that maybe the Brexit uncertainty means that um, you know possibly there's not going to be a massive recovery in the third quarter too. Um, so, sort of tepid global growth, um, earnings coming down, but central banks in there stepping up, hence, um, hence stocks are still rising. So I hope that helps. Good luck with trading this week, and um, talk to you again same time next Monday. Jasper Lord signing out.